Hello beautiful humans, coming live from Bali, <laughs> new location, actually the same one, but just I thought why don't I experiment a little bit and um, move around my place. And so today, as, as a part of our 28 days of surrender, <coughs> I'm feeling <laughs> very surrendered currently. <laughs> and uh, just so blissful uh, I've had just the most extraordinary day <laughs> I feel so nourished and so filled up and so opened in that fullness uh, it's just such a magnificent way to live this life and um, sometimes um, I receive questions from people about how to make decisions, how to really connect to the highest guidance, how to make sure that whenever we decide on something and it, it, like if it's, if it's an aligned decision or if it's something that is just like a pull from the ego and uh, <laughs> um, I can just give someone saying that I, uh, she loves that I'm smiling and uh, I just cannot stop this. <laughs> so blissed out <laughs> uh, so I received this question around like how to how to figure out what what is actually the right next step how to how to find out what's the right next thing to do uh, how to make sure that it's not the ego that's guiding you but it's your highest self and um, when you uh, come to my to experience my events when you come and join um, ecstatic remembrance that's coming up in like I don't know I think just like 10 days or something it's incredible uh, or when you join anything else when you work with me you should know that this work will always put you into your truest place it will help you integrate all the various aspects of your personality but at the same time it will align you with your highest truth and you will be focusing on on living from that place of the highest truth and so i want to to touch on that in the practice today so how to make sure that the decisions we are taking are not driven by the ego are not driven by old conditioning uh, but they are coming really from the highest truest place and it's it's not easy it's actually pretty complicated because as as i spoke already before in one of the these lives it's um it's, uh, you're welcome to ask a question, by the way, um, but we're, we're focusing on the highest guidance, yeah. So it's not easy to discern oftentimes, but it's just not easy because you may think that, oh yeah, this feels like truth, this feels right to me, or it doesn't feel right to me, or I changed my mind, but this may come from old traumas. You may have experience something in the past that that hurts you for example if you made a decision to commit to something and then you are like oh no i changed my mind it's no longer in my flow and it doesn't no longer feels true so this is a brilliant example because oftentimes we face with that you enter into agreement and then at some point it just doesn't feel good anymore so what is this oftentimes and far more often than not it's really a sense that like you feel maybe you agreed on something and then something from childhood comes up within that it's like as if you you made this you you decided on something and you may have <laughs> i'm having a hard time finding my words today <laughs> but go, i'm gonna transmit this point <laughs> so <laughs> Maybe we just sit here together. <laughs> Maybe I just stop talking and um, we just sit here together for a moment. <laughs> this is like the least linear <laughs> transmission live that I've ever made. Okay, great. You have, okay, so I have a point there. Let me finish it and I'll come to your question. So anyway, let's say you have an agreement <laughs> and at some point you're like, it doesn't feel good. So what may be playing underneath? I just want to give you a few examples. So one thing that may be playing underneath is that you have had an experience as a child where you've agreed on something, like, like your parents, you agreed on something with your parents or your parents sent you to a school. But then within the dynamic, 
you felt unseen, you felt unappreciated, and you had you've developed your own strategies on how to how to prove to yourself and to others that you are valuable, that you are appreciated, that you are important. Then I we we develop those strategies, and then we either repress what is going on and how we feel and we just don't acknowledge it or we go into rebellion and we rebel against this uh, notion of what we have to do what others expect us to do and then now as an adult you may be also breaking out of agreements because you have this experience in childhood and something inside of you in your subconscious mind and those deep 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 layers underneath that we do not see there may be something that is like it wants your attention and it doesn't mean that you need to get out of the agreement. It just means that there is something that you feel une unease with. And you're like, oh, why did I say yes to it? Oh, I, when it's actually no. And then you, you sit with it and, and you battle within that. And that's just one example. Yeah, it's, it may, it's not going to be always the case. But that's something always to get curious. Well, I made this decision. I decided to move in that direction. Let me honor myself of the past who decided that, on that. And if this agreement really involves two parties, then honor that. Like we live in a culture where people just like drop agreements just like that. But this also is an example that we live in, or it's a representation that we live in a culture where we do not have enough mature masculine. And this is what those agreements are. They are masculine structures that support the safety that support the expression of the heart when you have an agreement when you agree with someone that this is what this is your container this is the time you're going to meet this is the the space you're going to cultivate together this is how it works between you and then you drop it you drop that structure and you say basically fuck you to the masculine and then you may be complaining that there are no good men out there and then you may be complaining that you cannot rely on anyone but what are you doing in your own life? So, you know, it's like we get to expand that vision. And then one of these lives I was speaking about that, that sometimes we're not ready to see more. And that's why we do not create in a powerful way in our lives. Because in order to create a life of your dreams, a life of your highest destiny, you deciding on what is that highest destiny, by the way, it's not some kind of destiny that is like written in the stars, it's actually your choice. That's what I refer to when I speak about Supreme Destiny. And so when you see that, okay, well, I know my direction, I've decided, I've chosen, but it's not here. I've decided that I'm going to have this type of relationships. I decided that I'm going to live this kind of lifestyle. I decided that I will have this type of relationship with wealth, with my purpose. And then in reality, I don't see it. My bank account doesn't reflect it. My life doesn't reflect it. Nothing reflects that. People that I attract don't reflect that. Why? Because you are not creating powerfully. You, you do not have all resources available to you to create. The, the third eye is dimmed. Yeah, there is something because the third eye is the place from where we really envision, from where we set the course of our direction and unfold. Um, but if it's blurry and you have all these things, patterns popping up in your life and you're just not acknowledging them, you're in denial and you just keep bailing out of agreements. That's just one example that came up today. You keep changing your mind, you keep doubting, you keep feeling unstable, you keep like making decisions and changing your mind and doubting yourself and then you change your mind again and again and again. And then, oh, wow, it's exhausting. And then you put yourself into anxiety and then you put yourself into stress and then you make yourself depleted and then you get even more into anxiety because as I also was speaking in earlier lives, anxiety is simply body trying to create energy. It's simply, we're trying to activate that friction from emptiness, from nothingness. It's just like the coffee, you know, it's like this addiction to coffee. People don't even question. You drink a coffee in order to get some energy. <laughs> it sounds like a great idea. But if we look really at it, from where is this energy coming? Is this energy coming from you being resourced, blissful, nourished, really feel, filled, having filled up your heart because you hold yourself in the masculine structure enough that supports you to even listen to your heart, to even understand what your heart desires and give that to your heart. 
is it because of that you feel you have energy or is it because you took a shot of coffee and you think that you can go through your whole life just like pumping yourself from emptiness and moving through the motions of the day it's not sustainable my friends it's just cortisol production it's a stress hormone production you gonna you want to be running on stress your whole entire life I don't think it's a good idea. I think you, you, you came here for something so much more magnificent. I think you came here for a life that is truly extraordinary, for a life that is truly sourced from deep within, for a life that truly serves as a proof that divinity is our true nature. What do you think? What do you think about that? Does it ring a bell? Is this how you want to live from this place of resourced energy? And whenever you see resourced people, you know, those kind of people that walk through the street and you just are like, wow, who is that? <laughs> the kind of people you see on the dance floor and you're like, wow, I want to be close. I don't know why I want to be close to you. I want to I wanna know you. I want to I wanna be in your energy. Why? Because such people are resourced. Such people are connected to the erotic nature of, of life. Such people are allowing themselves to be conduits for love, but it's impossible to be a conduit for love if you are like dependent on stress to give you energy. Coffee, boom, let's go. Yeah, just stir yourself up, get some, get, you know, sh get a shot of anxiety in the morning, and then feel motivated by scarcity to move through the day and, and s sell your offers and uh, invite people into your world because you have to, you need to. Not sustainable, my friends, not sustainable, this kind of stuff. This living under pressure is not sustainable. You're gonna fade away. You, your, your health is gonna give you signals. Your emotional state, your nervous system is gonna give you signals of like, this is not sustainable. Get off the freaking hamster wheel and find yourself in this erotic aliveness, in this erotic openness to life. And uh, ecstatic remembrance this year is dedicated to that. Yeah, this erotic aliveness because this is the most important thing really you know as as far as i'm concerned this is the the my commitment to my erotic aliveness is what created everything i have in my life and the and the resources and the success and the vision and the clarity because i keep coming home to my own aliveness deep deep erotic openness to life this is what then allows me and us to be conducive to divine love. And that's our highest service to humanity, the highest service. You know, so many people are preoccupied about, you know, if the world is going to go into another world war and um, like things like that. And then they start to strategize around this and, and so on. But in reality, if we live disconnected from ourselves, that's the main war that's happening inside. And then it's just simply represented by the wars externally. So instead of trying to protect yourself from the world war that's coming, which is just speculation at this point, instead of that, resolve the war inside and get honest about that. And this is not something that gets to be postponed. This, this has to be the number one priority because really we live in pivotal times and at this time your everyday choices are profoundly impacting the evolution of your life and the evolution of humanity's consciousness. It's actually pretty significant. So uh, let me check this question. I'm working on changing my old patterns. I now don't know what emotion to bring to my relationship uh, or not anymore. I've chosen love sometimes when triggered, and that's fabulous, but sometimes can't hide. Mm, this needs a lot more context. I cannot just like dive in with you because uh, there's quite a lot, like every sentence you wrote here, there's like quite a lot of depth we can go into. So I'm not sure that that's the space for that. Um, but um, yeah, I, I would love to uh, to support you and the best way for us is to get to know each other and to, to dive into a deeper relationship, which is possible in my containers. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let me see. Yes, resolve the war inside. Uh, so my loves, let's do a practice. Let's do a practice of tapping into the highest guidance. So how are we gonna do that? Is by first of all, 
coming to a certain level of uh, openness, a certain level of activation of aliveness in the body. Um, let's come into that. And actually, possibly that your question that I cannot fully grasp in this very moment and, you know, like go deep with you into all of those aspects, you may actually get an answer. And that's anyway my highest wish for you, that you find this place where uh, you are held from deep within and all the answers are coming from this place, in fact. And then everything in your life has to just support you in order to, for you to keep being held in a way that you are tapping into the greatest wisdom within. Not that someone else will give you an answer that you don't have, but what is worth investing into is the spaces that are really keeping you uncompromising on your highest path. Okay, so let's get into the practice. So I'm just inviting you to move your body a little bit. Just connect to the sounds around you. You may hear the sounds over here. <laughs> and uh, just notice the sounds in your environment. Even if it's a city sounds, this is, this is fine. Just open to life. And connect to uh, a place in the world which actually feels nourishing to you. It may be a body of water. Maybe it's warm. Uh, hot spring somewhere, maybe it's on the contrary something really cold, cold water in Alaska or something like this in Siberia, um, a beautiful lake, or maybe you, you like to be in tropics like I am right now in, in lushness and in, in this humidity. Just put yourself, close your eyes and visualize yourself in this really most nourishing environment for you. I mean, the forest, in the rainforest, or in the European forest, just wherever you feel like, wow. And just plug into that place, calling it in, into your field. You can visualize the colors that are present there, the temperature, the type of feelings that get invoked inside of you when you are there. And then just welcome it into your body and take a breath with it. So breathing in that forest, bring, breathing in that jungle, breathing in that, that warmth or the coldness of that water. Deep inhale, inhale, inhale once again. Hold your breath. Hold it and exhale, relaxing the body. And once again, big inhale, really inhaling that environment, that nourishment of this profound environment. Inhaling love. Hold your breath. And exhale. Once again, like really connect to that vibrancy of that life force of that place. Big inhale and then we inhale once again. Not exhaling, inhaling, inhaling. And then hold the breath. Inhale. Breathing in that forest. Breathing in that warmth or coldness or whatever it is. Breathing in again. Hold the breath. And exhale. Letting go of stress and tension. And once again, inhaling into that environment, letting it hold you as you inhale. Inhale once again. Hold your breath. Feeling the, the energy flows in your body. You may perceive some little tingling or vibration. And exhaling. And then breathe it, bring it to your body. Move your body, move your shoulders in circles. Extend into your arms, move your arms. Make your arms loose, also move your spine. You can move in circles, entire spine. Relax your neck, relax your head. And again, the arms, really feeling as if you are dancing in that environment, in that lake, in that forest, in that hot spring, 
Spreading your legs, stretching your legs. Just a few big movements. Also, you can come up to standing and just some big movements. It's like you're dancing with the forest. You're dancing with the jungle. Big inhale, in breath. Opening to the bath, bath of nourishment. Exhale, letting go of tiredness, of stress. Inhale, taking in the nourishment. Exhale. Ooh. Inhale. Exhale. Really feeling how your cells start to vibrate with the nourishment of that environment. Inhale. Exhale. And your body just continues to move. Don't allow yourself to get stiff. We want to activate those energetic pathways through the body. Inhale. Breathing in the nourishment. Exhale. Letting go. Tiredness of stress. Ooh. And then closing your eyes if they were open. Just resting here in this space. I'm feeling a very really beautiful breeze right now. So maybe you also can receive some of that. And then in this place where you're here, you're present. Now connect to this really deep sacred place inside of you you can enter through the portal of your heart center so you can place your hand over your heart and then go in ask your heart to connect you to your highest self and this will only happen through stillness this will only happen through you tapping into a place of Profound emptiness within. So go into that emptiness. Oftentimes we try to rush out of the emptiness and fill it up with thoughts and uh, addictions and stress and coffee and decisions and nervousness. But now we want to go into that emptiness. So asking the heart to, to hold you as you go into the emptiness, into the stillness. Knowing that all your decisions, all your, all the things that are on your plate right now, all your tenderness, all your emotions are all held by your heart. And you're going deeper now, deeper into the stillness all the way home to the eternal beloved who is eternally here, eternally loving you, eternally holding you, eternally here. And then allowing your awareness to move above your head to the level of the crown chakra. At the same time, also feeling the third eye, this place where you get to drop the veils of illusion. And then feeling that pathway from the third eye to the crown. And feeling that space of emptiness right here. Profound clarity, profound discernment. Because it's just empty, it's not polluted by conditioning, it's not polluted by old traumas. It's not, there's no hindrance. It's just you and the highest truth. You give yourself to that space. Give yourself to it. Keep your awareness above your head. And 
And here, tapping into this question, what's the highest potential for my life? What's the most that can happen in a way that my true potential, my true destiny, the highest path can be revealed for me? What's the highest path for me? And just open. Do not attach to anything you've seen in the past. Do not try to hold on to anything that you've seen others do. Just be in this openness. What's the highest for me? The highest means that that, that which you love, that which feels so good in your heart, that which is so you, so true to you. Go into it. The highest for me in this life. Just allow the impressions to come to you. How do you see yourself? How do you move through life? Who is next to you? What do you do? What activities are a part of your day? How do you express your purpose? How do you feel in relationship to your purpose? How do you feel in relation to love? How do you feel in relation to family? What's your family life like? What's your relationship to wealth? How do you feel? in this connection with wealth? How do you experience it? Allow all these impressions to come to you. Don't filter them. Don't try to analyze them. You give yourself to these impressions. From this empty space of the void, Keeping the awareness and the level of the crown. And just feel into what comes that really lights your heart. Only accept that which really feels so good in your heart. That really brings you into a state of bliss. That is like, wow, this is so good. This is what I want. Yes, yes. This is the life I desire. Yes. Follow that feeling. And stay in the openness to receive, to receive these downloads, to receive these visions. Yes, that follow your yes, that which your heart says yes to. Yes, that's it. <laughs> Yes, yeah, I feel <laughs> things are popping. <laughs> Beautiful. Yes, follow that beauty, follow that love, follow that truth, follow that sense of aliveness. And that's it. That's what you get to trust. That's what you get to create. That's what you have the support of angels for. And then ask your future self who already has all these experiences ask for their blessing into you right now into your current life situation in regards to all these things and more receive the blessing now from your future self just turn your palms upwards turn your heart upwards energetically and just feel you are currently receiving blessing from the one who is you from the future <laughs> that is happening now who is sending you the blessings into your current situation to your current reality whatever it may be 
And those blessings include encouragement, that you're doing so well. I'm so proud of you. I know where you're headed. I'm so proud of you for getting us here. You're doing just fine. Every lesson you are experiencing right now will become a part of your highest becoming. Every struggle that you've had to navigate in your life and recently and you currently are navigating is a part of your greatest medicine. It may be hard to see it right now, but know that this is the truth. Every lesson, every initiation, every painful moment is in fact an opportunity for you to soften into it. and to receive the grace of your supreme becoming right in this moment. Taking a big breath in. Another in-breath at the top. Hold the breath. Feeling yourself that you're receiving these blessings into the now, into every challenging situation, into every challenging thing that you're currently navigating, and exhale. Once again, a big inhale. Inhaling the supreme destiny you've just seen. Inhaling once again, holding the breath. Yes, you are worthy of it. Yes, you deserve it. Yes, this is what truly wants to unfold for you. And exhale. And then just breathe normally. And bringing your hands to your heart. A gesture of honoring, acknowledging, gratitude for this path, for this privilege to have the awareness to, to see life through these eyes, through the eyes of your highest becoming. And now it's on you to keep embodying that wisdom, that beauty that you see for yourself. To continue to become the person you truly know you want to be, you are meant to be. And uh, decide on your choices right now based on that, based on what you've seen. Don't decide from you now, decide from your becoming. Whenever you make decisions from where you are now, you're making decisions from the past. Make decisions from the future and know what environments will support you, what mentors, this is so important, what people, what, who are the right people in your life, who are not the right people in your life. This, uh, I'm offering these practices in preparation for Ecstatic Remembrance. So all of you who are coming to Ecstatic Remembrance, well, if you have your ticket or you don't have your ticket yet, but if you know you're coming, really lean into Ecstatic Remembrance with that energy, with that sense of like, I've decided from my future self, this is the environment that will support my highest becoming. This is the environment that will support me living as love, me living as expressed, full, expanded, true being that truly shines the light of the divine through me. That's what's happening. I'm so happy you enjoyed the meditation. Thank you for being here. Please share with me in the comments. What did you see for yourself? Could you connect to your higher self? Could you connect to your future self? Could you receive the blessings and dedicate your ecstatic remembrance to that? to that which you've seen. You, I've already asked uh, the participants inside of Telegram group to share uh, what's your highest intention for our time together. Include now, upgrade it, include what you've seen in this meditation. And if you haven't joined Excited Remembrance yet, the link is in my bio. I, I love seeing people joining every day, it's so beautiful. Um, the price currently is $888, which is still a joke for what you're going to get in the three days together. And it's also a really cool uh, number. Eight has been strong for me and for us. Um, so it's a potent code also to enter with. So love you so much, beautiful humans. Cannot wait to be with you at Ecstatic Remembrance. 
and I will see you live pretty soon in a couple of days. I will let you know. Ciao, ciao.